2013 to 2014. Two years full of hits. The rise of Bitcoin, the emergence of Ebola, Gangnam Style, and... Luigi? The year of Luigi. Or as some might know it, the year Nintendo lost $450 million. I can hear some of you saying, why are you talking about this if it was such a net bad for Nintendo? Well, despite the year of Luigi being commercially a failure, I feel that it was one of the most fun and innovative, albeit poorly executed ideas Nintendo has had in years. So sit back, relax, and let's have a chat about the year of Luigi, and why I think Nintendo should try it again. The Year of Luigi was created in order to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Luigi's debut in the original Mario Bros. arcade game that was released on the NES all the way back in 1983. Not to be confused with the more widely known Nintendo classic Super Mario Bros. that released just two years later in 1985. In Mario Bros., Mario and Luigi are defending the sewers of New York from phases of an array of strange monsters, like crabs, flies, and half-evolved Koopas? Or at least I guess that's what's happening, it's kind of hard to tell. Just a side note here, apparently the Atari version of the game claims that Mario and Luigi actually live in the sewers, which I thought was just pretty funny. That being said though, it's such a weird detail to include, but never do anything else with. I mean, who knows, with how the second Mario movie's shaving up to be, that detail might not sound as silly as it currently does. Overall, this game is a fun high score chaser, but I personally find some of its older quirks frustrating at times. If you're interested in the true origins of the Green Thunder himself, then you can find this game not only through the NES or GBA Nintendo Switch Online apps, which I highly recommend because of their rewind feature, but by utilizing a nifty little feature that we will cover later in this video, so stay tuned. That being said though, this all seems like a great reason to celebrate a fan favorite character like the underdog little brother in green. But how does one make an average year worthy of a title like the Year of Luigi? Well, by releasing more Luigi-centered games and merchandise than you normally would. I'm sorry, was that not obvious? All right, gang, let's talk products. Recreational consumerists be warned, these are awesome. We're talking four brand new Luigi-focused games, two Luigi-centric additions to NES Remix and Super Mario 3D World, two special edition consoles that I very much want. I mean, look at them, they're beautiful, and just the perfect assortment of other merchandise. Here's your general enameled pins, bags, notebooks, and this really cool puzzle. And those aren't even your standouts. Starting out with the largest of these items, we have the Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon Diorama. It showcases a mischievous greenie, polter pup, and our little goofball ghostbuster clad in green, all standing in a scene of gloomy manner, the starting mansion from Dark Moon. But more on that later. Moving on from there, Nintendo did the unthinkable and dropped a real-life Year of Luigi coin that was super clean to look at, and it came in this really neat green felt bag. The best part, it wasn't for sale. It was one of the Club Nintendo rewards of the time, so for a measly 1,500 stars, which sounds like a lot but truly wasn't at the time, this super cool collectible could have been yours. Sadly, my most wanted item out of these is the Japan exclusive CD titled The Year of Luigi Sound Selection, which features over an hour of Luigi Diddy goodness, some of which you've hopefully been hearing in the background of this video. Oh yeah, also, before I move on, did I mention that they turned Chicago's L train into a Luigi fan's dream world? Because they did that, and it was awesome! I have never wanted to respect and indulge in public transport more than during that promotion. But that's just some merchandise and the promos. Let's get into the real make or breaks. The games. The first game released under the moniker of The Year of Luigi was Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Hitting store shelves in the US on March 24th, 2013, Dark Moon is generally viewed as an incredibly underwhelming sequel to the GameCube classic. However, this was actually the first Luigi's Mansion game I ever played, and I love it deeply due to this. What is Scott here? Uh, you know what? He just left. Really? Yeah. Okay, so looking back, maybe it's not what people wanted from a sequel to THE launch title for the almighty GameCube that can do no wrong, but it got a remaster this year, so that has to mean something, right? The game follows our silver boy in green, who is once again voluntold by EGAD to assist with his tiny little problem of a ghost revolution. 
Oh yeah, that's right. For some of you who've only played one or three, you're probably a little confused. Maybe wondering something along the lines of, well, weren't the ghosts always bad? Or revolution implies that they were once helpful. So does that mean they were good? I, like That doesn't make any sense. Don't worry, I'll explain it. I promise. This game takes place in Evershade Valley, a place that Egad chooses as his newest stomping grounds after discovering the location's Dark Moon, an artifact that makes any ghost within a certain radius to it passive and even willing to help with tasks. In this case, Egad's research, that is, until a strange round figure that's totally not King Boo by the way, destroys the thing and all the ghosts go haywire. Ergo, ghost revolution. But now, oh no, Luigi got super zucked through the TV and it's his time to catch the ghosty and find all the Dark Moon fragments so Egad can continue having an army of free labor or something, I guess. Oh, and uh, Mario got captured too. And some totes, which is new for this series and it's pretty cool. Ghastly Tales aside, the main gripes that people generally have with this game are its shift to a more level-based structure. The choice to have the story take Luigi through several different mansions instead of just one larger one. And of course, Egad never shutting up. Counterpoint to that specifically though, the ringtone in this game is absolutely a banger. So hold on, hold on, just vibe with me for a minute, okay? Cool? All right. Okay, you see my point now, so that just kind of cancels itself out. While I completely see the validity of the issues people have with the game, I feel that these changes were simply made for the purpose of making the game fit in better with other games that were present on the 3DS at the time. Many of the big sellers in Nintendo's eyes offered short, bite-sized experiences that you could easily finish, take a break from, and come back to when you had another chance. You know, like microdosing, but instead of committing a crime, you're enjoying a fun, spoopy time with the oh, Weege yeah. Man. With this in mind, this is still an incredibly enjoyable experience. I mean, if you think about it, this game did set the standard for the tone and expressiveness that would carry over into Luigi's Mansion 3. And that game is just, ooh, chef's kiss. Perfect. Moving on from there, we jump to another highlight of the year tainted in green, Mario and Luigi Dream Team, which rocketed onto store shelves on August 11th, 2013, and my developmental years were reshaped entirely. If you've been following me for a while, you may have been able to deduce that this is one of, if not, my favorite RPGs of all time. And can you blame me? The game follows Bros and Co. on their trip to Pilo Island after being invited by the island's administrator, Dr. Snoozemore. While traveling to the island, the group's balloon is attacked by a nightmarish purple ruffian who is easily dispatched by Mario. However, as the villain gets knocked away, he cuts the balloon that our crew was flying on and our heroes begin plummeting to their demise. Roll credits. Mauro and Wegus are died. Rip in Pasquettios. Never forgettios. No, just kidding. It is revealed that this whole event was just a nightmare Luigi was having. After more antics ensue, the bros discover an artifact from the island's ancient society, which Luigi promptly uses to take a nap on. C come on, man, what are you... That's a stone, Luigi. Anyways, after Luigi falls asleep faster than me after editing a 45-minute video, a dreamy portal opens above his snoozing cranium and... <gasps> Peach is sucked into it. Who'd have thunk? Is that a call to action I smell? This leads Mario to dive into the dream world, and the dreamy adventure begins. If this sounds interesting to you, please feel free to check out my Let's Play series on the game where two episodes are already up, but I will be restarting it very soon, so feel free to check that out. Okay, is this one of the blander Mario and Luigi games? Sure, I'll admit that any day. Besides the Luigi-nary powers, of course, some of those are pretty clever, but I loved this game so much growing up, I asked my family to buy me the strategy guide for it. After I'd already beaten the game! 
Heck, I still have the thing all these years later and even find myself flipping through it sometimes just to reminisce and look at all the super awesome stylized art of the characters in there. But I'll stop myself there because I could make full videos on both of the games I've mentioned so far. And who knows, if you guys like this one, maybe I will. With both of the good games out of the way, let's talk additions to other Nintendo games of the time. First was the addition of Luigi-centric minigames to NES Remix. They sort of speak for themselves, but are very cool and I recommend trying them out if you haven't before. The coolest of these celebratory additions, in my opinion, is the feature I alluded to early in the video. So if you were waiting for that, listen up, there will be a question about this on the test. When playing through Super Mario 3D World, you can unlock several things. Miiverse stamps, hidden warp pipes, Rosalina as a playable character, and the easiest of them all. The ability to play Luigi Bros, a remade version of the original Mario Bros, right from the main menu of 3D World. The reason I say this is the easiest but coolest unlock in the game is because all you have to do to unlock it is beat the main worlds in the story of 3D World and boom! A neat little pixel Luigi icon shows up on the main menu and you are given access to the neat little remaster, which works with both the original 3D World and the Switch port to my knowledge, which gives it some bonus points. So let's review. A ton of cool merchandise, Luigi references in a ton of games, and two Luigi based games that started out hated but have made a resurgence in popularity in recent years. This is awesome! I see no problems here. Oh my goodness! Nintendo! Okay, so these next two games should have been hits in concept at the very least. And to most people they were. Just add an S to the beginning of hit. New Super Luigi U was released June 20th, 2013 to a collective sigh across every game store in the world. And ever since then, summer has been getting warmer and warmer. It's crazy how much hot air disappointed gamers can produce all at once. Now, to Nintendo's credit, they did release a very interesting promotion to help hype up this game, a little mockumentary called Legend of Parkour. It follows an in-progress documentary about Luigi, a parkour visionary who's gone missing from the public eye and the producer's journey to find him. There's some cool nods to different things here and there, and the parkour segments are actually very cool and authentic from what I can tell. However, after 11 years, it started to show its age a little bit, but I still recommend taking the time to watch it. This is just such a unique campaign format from Nintendo that I've never seen them try again since, and despite this being in the bads, it's definitely the best of the worst. I'll be sure to link it down in the description in case you want to check it out yourself. All right, cool promotional campaigns aside, Super Luigi U does have new unique level layouts and they don't just reuse all the levels from Super Mario Bros U as I had expected them to. Another twist with this game is you're only given 100 seconds to finish each level. And they did give Luigi his higher jump height and his slippery boots. While I'm mentioning that, why does that happen exactly? Is there like a lore reason or is it something I missed in a manual? I don't exactly know, but I'll just go ahead and pass that one off to Game Theory. There you go, Tom. There's a free video idea now that MatPat is gone. And as we all know, that's just a theory, a game theory. OK, I'm going to refocus before I start getting sad about MatPat being gone. I love that they added these unique gameplay mechanics to Luigi to make him feel different, but I feel like they don't really utilize them that well. At least not in my experience with the game. This is what I feel was one of, if not the major flaw with the Year of Luigi. A bunch of interesting concepts and ideas that were just never utilized or expanded upon. And that is seen nowhere more than with Dr. Luigi. Dr. Luigi was the final software release in the Year of Luigi. And who boy, did they end on an unfortunate low note. It's easy to say things about this game like, Oh, it's just a reskin Dr. Mario, or oh wow, one new pill type and it's an L. What is this, Tetris? Honestly though, my main concern with this is just how underwhelming it is when compared to not just the other games in the Dr. Mario series, but even more so when compared to the rest of the lineup from the year of Luigi. I'll start out by admitting I have never owned or played this title, and all the opinions I'll be expressing here are either points that other people have made that I agree with, or deductions I've made secondhand by watching gameplay footage of the game. Now with disclaimers out of the way, let's start diagnosing what exactly might have gone wrong with this game. Let's start with the elephant in the room. To put it plainly, one of these things is unlike the others. So to put that into more of a perspective, Try something with me real quick. Let's say the Year of Luigi as a whole is a store. You enter the store and ask to see their premier products. The shopkeep brings over four items, a sequel to a beloved game, a long awaited new entry in a fan favorite series, a slightly different version of last month's special and medical malpractice. Oh! 
You know, just a letter that affirms that you've committed medical malpractice and you will now bear the weight of that for time evermore. Oh, and they're still charging you for that, by the way, if it wasn't bad enough already. Dr. Luigi was sold for 15 bucks at launch, and with that knowledge, it kind of makes sense that it turned out to be pretty lackluster. Hey guys, uh, Carter from the edit here. Apparently, there was a point at which Dr. Luigi was free? When I, when I showed this in the screening that I did, apparently somebody pointed out, hey, there was a moment where it was free. I don't remember it, but I'm just including this in here just to cover my bases. But we're just going to continue from here. I just wanted to say that. Thank you guys. Enjoy the rest of the video. Bye. The main difference between this game and the past Dr. Mario games is the addition of a new mode called Operation L. Sounds super cool, right? Like a new story mode or something like what Dr. Mario 64 had with all its extra modes. Here, let me just show you. You're going to love this. So here's a clip of regular mode. All right. And here's a clip of Operation L. Now, I know this is like a spot the difference and you didn't sign up for all that. So let me just show you. All right. This one has an L pill variant. And that's it. That's right, dear viewer. No need to comically rub your eyes or order a new pair of glasses. That's it. No other visual changes. But they did at least make some new music tracks special to this mode. So that totally warranted an entire other menu option, right? Also, another thing to note, this game having way too many gameplay modes is a common theme, and you might not have been able to tell, but I'm not a huge fan of them because I put gameplay modes in quotation marks on the script, so you know I must be serious. So there's Operation L, as we said before, Retro Remedy, which is just a reskinned classic Dr. Mario, and Virus Buster. Once again, it sounds super cool, but in actuality, this is just a whole mode dedicated to a version of the game that lends itself more to the Wii U gamepad. It's a smaller area to fit the pills into. They move slower, though that can be changed slightly, but this is the real kicker. Sometimes more than one pill drops at a time. Now, I hadn't played Dr. Mario until recently when I decided to do so as research for this portion of the video. And I've got to tell you folks, if more than one pill drops at a time while I'm playing, I'm having a full-blown panic attack, and it's not going to be pretty. And from the looks of things, the Mario Bros. Clinic is booked out for the foreseeable future, so that means I'm going to be stuck with, uh... Oh no, Dr. Toad. As for Dr. Luigi as a whole, give it a try if you can. Look, I know I kind of tore this game apart, but it is a core belief of mine that any game, no matter how bad, holds some redeemable aspects. I mean, think about all the people that worked on this and how little they got back from it financially. It's at least worth putting in the time to try it out, or if you can't, do what I did. Go watch a long play. It's good for you. And who knows, you might gain an entirely different perception of the game than I did. To whom it may concern. My name is Carter, and I've always been a fan of Luigi. Mario is awesome, don't misunderstand me, and I love Nintendo overall, but there's always been something special about Luigi. I noticed it. Several fans did too. We all latched onto it. Something about this character that started out as a simple color swap had become so much more than I feel sure you had even planned for them to. Luigi became more than just a simple character. He was easier to relate to because of his flaws. He was taller than others, awkward in social situations, and above all, a tall man made small in a big, scary world. Luigi showed us that it's okay to be all that showed us that we're capable of being more than that. He wasn't just taller, he could jump higher, become a thunder, thunder mage, make friends, and even eventually overcome his biggest fear, ghosts. You tried to showcase this once with a celebration of all these things, the year of Luigi. It started out promising. Gamers, no, people from every walk of life began to know who Luigi was and in some cases, what he stood for. There were a couple stumbles here and there, but such is life. It's poetic in a way. For every person that makes great strides in their journey through life, they also likely have their own Dr. Luigi. We mess up, and it sucks. A lot. For you, $450 million a lot, and I know that's bad. But that didn't stop you. You kept going. And look where you are now. You never would know such a loss had happened if it wasn't documented. So here's my proposal. Why not try again? This last year, more than any before, you've shown that you're listening to your consumers. You want to make what they want, know what they feel they need. Right now, the world is going through so much and so many of us have lost that pure feeling of joy or hope. 
the feelings that Nintendo as a whole has always strived to exude, if not protect in some cases. So why not take a risk? Try an odd, slippery high jump across that gap. You know, the one that's been pestering you for so long, and I think you might be surprised what you might find on the other side of it all. <laughs> okay, maybe you don't think Luigi is exactly the right person to take charge on that front right now. I mean, that's fair. If you've listened this far, I have some ideas I'd love to share. For starters, there's a certain someone who many people would love to have showcased. <laughs> I mean, come on, Nintendo, Waluigi's an easy answer for this sort of thing at this point. If not him, then there's always Toadsworth. Where's he been, anyway? Is he safe? Please, please tell us, Nintendo. I mean, while we're thinking, why stop at Mario and his crew? We could do a year of Skull Kid, or heck, even a year of Tingle. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, for legal reasons, I'm being told that the year of Tingle idea was a joke, and an alternative could be the year of, uh... Bruce, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Skyward Sword guy, yeah, uh, him, or you know, uh, Impa, Samus, Tom Nook, even though he may be a Marxist, the jury's still out on that. Either way, Nintendo, you're sitting on a Hyrule field full of oil right now, and I'm serving you up ideas on a silver platter for free. Now, I'd go into more specifics on each one, but this video is already getting pretty long and I don't want to take up too much of your time. That being said, if anyone else who's watching would be interested in seeing something like that, feel free to comment down below and let me know. And with that, I want to give one final thanks to Luigi. Oh yeah! Not only would none of this video be a thing if you weren't around, but I doubt I'd be who I am today if it weren't for the character that you are and the things that you stand for. Wow. So thank you for that. This video means a lot to me, you mean a lot to me, and I hope it did you proud. Oh yeah! Bye bye. With that being said, folks, thank you for spending some time here in our little corner of the internet. It's not much, but it's ours. I hope you've enjoyed your time here. And until next time, I've been Carter. Have a great day. Hey guys, it's Carter again. I just wanted to stop in here at the end to just say thank you so much for watching this video. It's taken about a year and a half with script writing, recording and editing to get it all together. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I also want to give a quick thanks to the professors and friends and other people who showed up to the screening to actually get a focus group going for this video and get some feedback. I think it made it a lot better and I hope you all agree. If you enjoyed this, please like, comment, subscribe to make sure you don't miss anything else. I got a lot of other cool stuff coming out. I'm really excited for it. I hope you guys are as well. With that being said, thank you all so much for stopping by our little corner of the internet. It's not much, but it's ours. I've been Carter. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>